Good morning, Denise Dryden here, out on Bainbridge Island. And I picked, this is the last weekend I'm gonna be in this house next to this tree. So I wanted to honor this beautiful cedar tree behind me. And maybe while I'm talking, we can listen to the birds and maybe the frogs next door will come out and talk. This has been a fabulous place and it's not raining so I can get outside. Today I wanted to talk about your true self. Like, and this is kind of abstract, so, so, so hang in there with me, because I'm one of these eclectic um, intellectuals who, 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 who gathers information from all over the place and then brings it into relationships, right? And that's why, that's why I coach families and I coach um, men and women in relationship and I coach young adults is because what, we, what I want to do is look at who are you in relationship to the rest of the world. So I'm gonna take two kind of, maybe even add a third one in there, um, two really bizarre sort of um, concepts. So hang in there with me and go where we're gonna go, okay? <laughs> we're going to what charted territory <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> so the first thing I wanna talk about is the hermetic principle of vibration. And the second thing is the physics definition of resonance, okay? So here we go. Um, hermetic principle of vibration is that everything is in motion and everything vibrates. Nothing is at rest. Think about that. Everything is in motion, everything vibrates, and nothing is at rest. Which means that energy systems, human energy systems, trees, nature, everything on our, on our earth is alive, ongoing, and it has its own individual frequency signature. And I'm thinking that that signature definitely has to come from the heart because if we are an energy system and the pumping factor is our heart, it means that that signature comes from the center of our heart. So using the hermetic principles, the signature of who we are comes from the center of our heart and then we resonate like anything else does with our own frequency. So the hermetic principle number one is that everything is in motion. Number two, resonance in physics is one vibrating system or an external force. It could be wind, it could be sound, it could be a human being, it could be a gathering, a group, um, drives another. <laughs> so one vibrating sense drives another. So like two tuning forks, you can, you can hit the tuning fork and it will start to hum and this one will pick up and they will do the exact same reverberation. So this is physics. I think we did this in fourth grade, you know, understanding sort of the law of vibration and how when one thing that is powerful and strong sets out, it can direct and lead and bring in the rest of the vibrations. Um, they unify they bring into form, they join together. And I think the thing to remember is that the stronger vibration, the more dominant one is gonna sort of lead or the one that, yeah, I would say the dominant one. That doesn't mean, mean big or powerful. It just means the one that has the most consistent, strongest reverberation is what we're going to align with. And so when we come up with small groups, when we come up with concerts, when we come up with um, even countries and com communities and countries, we're going to gather together into a resonance together and we're going to find sort of a homeostasis in that group. So physics says that vibrating systems drive one another and hermetic principle says, and there's motion always going on. So when our body systems are aligned or try to align with some of that energy, um, I got somebody who just walked in the gate. Hold on. You guys, you can't come in here right now. Hello? I'm, I'm doing a video, so can you give me about five minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I, we'll be quiet. I, I have to leave. Thank you. Sorry, I have interruptions. It's so weird. I have somebody just randomly walk in the backyard. Um, so, when one system interacts with another system, it means that we're going to be either in harmony or we're going to be dissonant, which is this one's going like this and you're like, oh no, I can't do that. And so you're going to try to match it and it's not going to work. 
And then what happens when we as human energy systems get into dissonance, get into conflict, or get into this, this rough sort of what are we supposed to do area with another person or a crowd or a job or something like that. So going back to these principles, this is going to happen naturally and our ability to hold our own true selves when there's something dissonant in there is becomes really challenging. So let's talk about that. If we are out of dissonance with another person or with a job or with the energy of something, we can feel it in our bodies. And the way that it's described in physics is that this can either be mildly impacted or can be dramatic. So let's talk about that mild impact, that little tap, 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 tap on the shoulder. So mildly uncomfortable is sort of like, uh, I feel it, I hear it, but I'm going to ignore it. Kind of like the boiling frog in a, it, you know, you put a frog in and you turn the heat up slowly. The frog doesn't know that the water is boiling. I think that's what happens with us is that's tap, 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 out of resonance, out of resonance, out of resonance. And then we don't know what to do with that. So we can do a lot of different things. And we've seen this in human behavior. We can ignore it. <laughs> we can ignore it. We can ignore it and pretend like it's not there. And then it shows up in our energy system is low energy, as listlessness, as restlessness, as sort of a small little bit of agitation. It can show up as illness and disease. <laughs> After a while, your body gets exhausted trying to match an energy that is not in um, partnership with it. They, we self-medicate. We smoke weed. We drink wine. We have cocktails every night. We boost it up with caffeine. We do exercise. We do sex. We do anything to make that out of sync resonance go away. Makes sense. We um, create distance. We separate like, eh, I'm still married to you, but I'm going to spend as much time as I can away from you and find things to distract me when I'm with you. Or in the case of teenagers and family members, we act out. We get pissed. We yell. We try to make them change that vibration because we don't understand what the energy separation is. So we match or we try to change or we get mad. So sometimes these, when we're out of dissonance, we have a low level of anger. We have a low level of anxiety. We have a low level of agitation and we don't know what that's about, right? We have no clue what that's about. So what we know is this works, and but that doesn't. Or we, we're able to identify what's wrong with the outer world, but we don't know what to do with the inner world. So, I, you know, when we talk about anxiety, what happens when kids go to school and they're in classrooms with kids that are not like them? that their energy is different. What happens when we go to work and we either collaborate and we find this really nice resonance and we hone, or we're in conflict all the time and it feels kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> so I'm going to put this one more thing in here. What happens when we go and we explore this word indigo? What do you know about indigo? Indigo is a color. There's a really cool ladies rock band called the Indigo Girls. Um, indigo is a, there's, there's books written about indigo children, the indigo generation. And so when we go to sort of the bigger, broader picture, there's a belief system on our planet that there are people on our earth who hold this indigo, that they're indigos. They hold this indigo energy. And when you, when we, when I looked into what indigo energy really is, Indigo energy is the vibration of truth. That's it. It's just a really powerful internal genetic vibration of truth. We know what truth looks like. We know what it feels like. We know what we need to do about it. And we can ignore it. Tap, tap, tap. We can pretend it's not there. And this truth is just coming out. And so it impacts schools. It impacts work. It in fact impacts work relationships. Because when we have this vibration of truth, <laughs> and we can't turn it off and we're in, in disintegrous environments, it makes sense that everything's going to go sort of cattywonkum, right? 
So, so when we take the, the hermetic principle of vibration, resonance in indigo, what we know is that there's a lot of things shifting and changing on our planet. And there's a lot of things that are unseen, invisible. And what are we going to do about that? So the tool that I use that works consistently at helping me as an indigo cut through what's going on in this environment, what is really, what, are, what can I really do, is I work with my body system, either using my body as a pendulum, and if you can go on my website and look at my podcast, and there's a closed eye exercise on how to find your body as a pendulum, or I just use simple muscle testing, yes, no's. So, you know, when you go to the go to a, a natural path and they muscle test you, they can do that. But for us to do it ourselves, I just simply link these two. And if they stay together, it's a yes. If, they, if it's a no, they start to slide apart and I can't hold them no matter what I do. So then I become a partner with the inside of my body and say, so is it in my highest interest? Being very kind and very passionate. Is it in my highest interest to do this? Is it in my highest interest to do that? Is it in my highest interest to take a bath? And I start to, to wonder how do me and my entire energy system get into balance so that I'm not reacting in, to this resonance, to this vibration out there. So the, it does a couple of things. When you ask it what you want to know, it sets an intention. Like this is, I'm going to ask you because I really want to know. My intention is I want to know. So please give me an answer. And it's kind of like dating. It's like I, I'm going to get curious. I'm going to pay attention. And I'm going to listen to what you say. Because if we ask our body and we go, yeah, I don't, nah, I didn't like that answer. And we keep phrasing the question over and over again until we get the answer we want. We're still in dissonance. Right? We're not in resonance. <laughs> so... You pay attention, you lean in, you listen, and you're like, oh, good idea. And you, 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 you partner with it. And then you respect the answer. Because it's, the, you know, it's like, is it my highest interest to have popcorn tonight? And your body says no. Yeah, I don't know if I respect that idea. I think I'm still gonna have, part, have popcorn. And then you can pretty much count on the fact that you're gonna have, I'm going to have an upset stomach because I never have just a little bit of popcorn. I have a lot of popcorn. So yes, no's is a way to cut through that understanding that I am an energy system and my energy system impacts others and others impact me. And I need to know how to get to some clarity on what that is. Is that me? Is that them? What can I do about it? So this is the kind of stuff that I teach and I'm starting to explore with resonance. So we're going to keep doing some series on this and I'm going to break down some scientific processes and make them really applicable to what you know how, what we can do on this, what, what you want to do. Um, you can find me on denisedrydencoaching.com and have a fabulous Sunday and goodbye to this wonderful cedar tree. Take care.